Yeah, Aaron here. Welcome back to another anime review. Today we are looking at episode two of Welcome to the Ballroom. Once again, this show impressed me. You know, the first episode really hooked me. It was something that when I was watching it, I was like, wow, I, I was captured by it. And I, I love the move. I love the movements. I love the music. I love the whole attitude of the show. It just feels like a great, great show. And you know, you wonder like, can it keep it up? Second episode shows that maybe it can. I, I, you know, I mean, obviously the manga readers have said that this show continue to blow people. It's going to continue to blow people away, and I could see that. I could really kind of feel that already because I was blown away by this episode. So this week we have um, our main character. Oh, let me look up the names because I'm sorry about that. But I'm terrible with the names for these characters. Um, Tatara, who for the most part actually is now realizing that you know he has potential. You know, Sengoku sees that, and I remember Sengoku because it's like the easiest name to remember. Uh, Sengoku sees potential in him, and even is like treating him less like a nuisance and more like a fellow student. He hires two private teachers that are like there on days that they really don't have anything else to do to help him out. And the thing is, though, is that despite teaching him so much in the course of two weeks, it seems like it got worse. The thing was, though, is that Sengoku realized something about Tatara, and that is the fact that Tatara's main ability isn't to be taught by words, but by seeing. And he's able to mimic perfectly what he sees. This is seen, obviously, in the later part of the episode when he sees the um, the other dude. I forgot the guy's name. I think I think it's um, uh, Hito. And he sees Hito from the competition, and also when he sees him just practicing by himself, he sees him using a, a, seeing a shadow of his partner, which is the girl. And what's interesting is that he's able to mimic that, and Sengoku was surprised. That was how the episode ended, where he's like, he's able to do that perfectly, where he can mimic someone's shadow when he's dancing, meaning that he has a proficiency that's probably way beyond even what Sengoku realizes. I, you know, I'll tell you guys, the animation, you know, okay. My probably my biggest complaint maybe is the necks. The necks are kind of weird. I, I won't lie. I think, I think everyone by now notices that where the, their necks are like super elongated. But in a way, I thought that would be kind of weird. But at the same time, it kind of works for the show because it's supposed to be meant to show these limbs moving in, in very, you know, huge movements. And I think that's why they made the necks and arms, even legs, kind of move in almost unnatural ways in terms of. The, the length of them but at the same time it feels natural when you actually see them dancing and that was something that I'm very blown away by because I, I'll tell you right now guys and girls a lot of anime when they have dancing movements and stuff like that it can look hit or miss and Welcome to Ballroom that was probably one of my big concerns about it originally before we saw the PVs and all that was could they do something like this in terms of movement you know uh, Yuri and Ice no matter what you think of Yuri and Ice I gave it a lot of props for the sheer fact that the way they moved on the ice for the most part it looked pretty damn good there were times where it was like eh, it's okay but 99% of the time it looked solid and it was just this fluid motion and a welcome to the ballroom it has that same movement where characters are dancing and you almost think like wow these are like real people dancing or at least what your mind will go into the perception of thinking that these are real people dancing and I love that I think that's an amazing thing so definitely episode 2 was just as good as episode 1 I can't wait till episode 3 guys. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. I have uh, Centaur's Life episode 2 coming out, uh, review wise. Probably give me like 25 minutes for that. And Fate Apocrypha will be out whenever it comes out. So, you know, if it's out tonight, unfortunately, that's probably what's going to happen. But I'll try to get out to you guys as soon as possible. Anyways, I will talk to you guys later. Have a great, brilliant, brilliant, great, brilliant day. God bless you all. Bye bye.